What's going on Lighthouse? With all the rain that we've been having recently, you might feel like you've been stuck in the house, getting a little stir crazy. Well, hopefully you're catching us every Sunday here on the ACC Lighthouse YouTube channel where we'll be, ha we'll be having lessons for you every Sunday. And we're continuing our series called Calm in the Chaos, Exploring the Psalms Through Prayer. Now, if you've missed the past couple of sessions with us, you might be asking yourselves, well, what are the Psalms? I'm not really familiar with them. Well, they're simply a collection of different people's experiences that they've written out as poetry and as song, and they've just been declaring how faithful God actually has been and how never changing he actually is. Uh, so join with me by turning in your Bibles to Psalm 2, and we'll be looking at verses uh, 1 to 9 today. So Psalm 2, verses 1 to 9. I'm going to be reading uh, the Psalm for us. This is God's word. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So, what are we looking at today in Psalm 2? Well, first, what we're going to see is the nation's rebellion in verses 1 to 3. The nation's rebellion. So what we have here in the first three verses is the nation's rage, the nation's in deception, and the nation's in an alliance that's against God. It's like the scenes leading up to the epic final battle in a movie that's going to take place where all the kingdoms conspire, they come together to form this unholy alliance of evil. So if we were to summarize uh, what we see here in the first three verses, what one word would you choose? For me, I would simply say that it's sin. Scripture tells us that God puts governments into place and they are under God's subjection but we see the world rejecting God's rule so how would we define sin then Cornelius Plantinga gives us a really helpful of definition of sin this is what he says sin is any act any thought desire emotion word or deed that displeases God and deserves blame so sin is anything that uh, rebels against God and his character. It's clear what we see in verses 1 to 3 is all of humanity's sin that's on display. And a life where we sin is not the way it's supposed to be. That's not how God intended for us to live and experience life. And yet, that's the very essence of what we see here in our passage. And isn't that our own lived experience? Everyone wants to live their life to define for themselves what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad. We need to recognize that everyone ultimately wants to call their own shots. No one wants to submit to God. We want to be God instead. We see much in the world that goes against the heart 
of God. And I think when we look at ourselves, I'd venture to guess that you and I see just how much we rebel against God in our own lives as well. We really are no less guilty than the rest of the world. Now, if God just left us there, we'd find ourselves in an incredibly hopeless place. But no, God promises not to leave us in a hopeless place. Instead of a government or a kingdom that will reign, God promises to us in verses 4 to 9 that Christ will reign instead. So that's what we're going to be seeing in this second section. Verses 4 to 6 tell us uh, all who oppose God need to stop being foolish. They need to take a pause for a moment and take a look at actually who reigns over the earth. And verse 7 tells us exactly who that is. It's Jesus. Jesus as the only begotten Son of God. The psalmist is saying, reminding us the answer to the simple question that we're all asking ourselves in ourselves in these really incredibly challenging times right now. Who is in charge? It's not Trump, it's not the CCP, and it's not the WHO. Psalm 2 verses 8 and 9 squarely tell us that Christ is in charge. And we know this because God has given Jesus the nations as your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. In other words, the whole world belongs to Jesus. If nothing else, Psalm 2 teaches us what being Christ-centered actually looks like. When we think about the coronavirus and the loss of life and the massive disruption and the economic fallout that's wrecked all of our lives, we recognize that this is not the way it's supposed to be. We're all experiencing just how fragile our former lives actually were. But the psalmist has absolute confidence in Christ's supreme reign over all kings, kingdoms, governments, and yes, even over the coronavirus. So we're left, so what are we left that we can do? What can be done to turn the tide? Well, I submit to you that prayer can actually turn the tide. And since we're stuck in our homes all the time, I know a lot of us are taking walks just to get out of the house. So I want to submit to you that prayer walking is one way that we can really engage with God in this time. So what is prayer walking? Prayer walking is literally walking while praying. It's not hard. It's not complicated. Hopefully you can do two things at once. And as you're walking, you're seeing new things that could uh, be bringing new new things to mind, or even being reminded of things that you already knew of. Maybe you, uh, you pray uh, as you get up in the morning, and as you, you pray as you brush your teeth, as you wash your face, as you get changed, as you eat your breakfast, you're doing life, you know, you're, you're not just sitting down in a corner uh, with your head in your, in your Bible trying to pray, but instead, you're doing things and you're active, but you're still praying to God. You can also just go on a walk in your neighborhood or on a trail that's nearby. And you can just pray uh, for whatever you see and whatever comes to your mind. So maybe it's just appreciating God for his creation. Maybe you just come across a neighbor's home and you know that your friend's mom is a doctor, and so you're praying for her safety and for the hard work, all the hard work that she's doing. Or maybe you walk by home and you had heard that someone in that home had just gotten laid off. Those are just different ways that you can be praying for uh, by, by prayer walking your own neighborhood. Some of you might be asking, well, is prayer walking even biblical? Well, when we look at Joshua 6, 
we see Joshua leading the Israelites to try to capture the city of Jericho. And they walked around Jericho praying, and then they walked around Jericho even more in one day, and God tore the walls down. And what were they doing? They were just praying to God, singing songs to God, lifting up their request to God for God to do his amazing work. We also see in Nehemiah 1 that Nehemiah wept, he mourned, he fasted, and he prayed for Jerusalem as he was making his way back from Persia. And when he walked the ruins of Jerusalem, he witnessed the realities of his prayers. These are great examples from the Old Testament of what it's like to prayer walk and to lift our prayers up to God just based on what we see and what we know about the circumstances that are going on in our own lives as well. And so what does prayer walking actually accomplish? Prayer walking first accomplishes a lifestyle of continuous ongoing prayer with God where you can just constantly have this dialogue and this discussion with God just throughout your day with whatever you're doing. So you could be doing chores, you could be washing your dishes, you could be doing your homework. Whatever it is, you can have just this ongoing conversation with God. Secondly, prayer walking is how you can actually fight, get in the battle to fight uh, spiritual warfare. And thirdly, this is an opportunity for us to be responsive to the Holy Spirit's leading in our own lives as well. And so what I want you to imagine is a map of the city of Austin. And imagine that this coming week that there's going to be a trail of prayers that we could see where Lighthouse students are walking their neighborhoods, lifting their neighbors up in prayer and asking God to do amazing work in their lives for their neighbors and their friends to encounter God because we are lifting them up in prayer. That's what I want you to, to have a vision of, right? And that, that would be a beautiful thing if, that, if that's something that we're all doing this coming week. With that being said, let's turn to the Lord in prayer and I'll show you uh, our discussion questions, our application, and the few announcements that we have to cover. Father God, we thank you that we can look at your word here in Psalm 2, that we can have confidence in you, that you will reign, that your son will reign, that you are in control of all things. We know that we are in uh, really volatile times, and yet uh, we know that no matter how uncertain things are, we can always lean and trust in you. So God, we ask that you would help us uh, walk our neighborhoods this coming week, that we uh, walk in prayer. We'd be constantly in dialogue with you this coming week. Holy Spirit, help us to do that so that we might uh, draw close to you, uh, that we might uh, be in uh, communion with you this coming week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So a couple of the discussion questions for you to consider uh, first of all, what I'd like you to do is to uh, share in one way how your family's life it, or your life is different uh, now that um, we're really just dealing with the coronavirus. So uh, please make it non-school related, but just one way um, things are not the way they are supposed to be. And how has that affected your life? For the second question Counselors, pick, uh, pick groups for your students to share the second point. And for the second point, what I would love for you to do is for you to pair up with another student and to confess a sin that you're wrestling with uh, and to be praying for each other over the course of the week. Now, the objective of this is to really to have you keep each other accountable, to be lifting each other up in prayer, and to know that you are not alone as you try to uh, wrestle with your sins so that you might become more and more like Christ in this coming week. 
And then lastly, of course, what I'd love for you to do is to go on a prayer walk in your neighborhood. And if there are other Lighthouse students that live nearby, I might want to suggest that you uh, coordinate a time where you can uh, prayer walk in a socially distant uh, manner together and to ask God to show mercy to your neighbors. You can even read Psalm 2 again and you can pray that out loud and be, be praying uh, different, just different prayers, whether that's uh, for your neighbors or for uh, what's been going on around the world. If you go to this link, acc.church slash list of COVID-19 prayers, uh, you'll find a list of 20 different types of prayers that you can be lifting up to God uh, as a prompt for you to, to continue to find uh, new ways and new things to be praying for um, to, to have God really cover the broad scope of everything that needs uh, to be addressed. You can find all of these questions and the applications down in the description below. And lastly, a couple announcements to wrap things up. Uh, all of our small groups have gone virtual, so if you need help getting in contact with your counselor, please email me and I will help you get connected uh, to your counselor. Counselor appreciation and senior banquet have been rescheduled. Uh, obviously with the summer, it's kind of a, everything's a moving target right now, but we're working on finding new dates for those. ST applications are also open right now. Uh, the deadline to submit your application is May 8th. If you would like an application, please email me at dchan at austinchinesechurch.org. And lastly, our Good Friday service is scheduled for next Friday at 7.30, and it'll be streaming online. So if you go to acc.church slash Good Friday, you can get all the information there. Um, please join a couple minutes early just to make sure you're all set up. Continue to check out our Instagram, our YouTube channel, the website, and your email for more information 